We're going to start talking football right now and also um, society, American society as a whole, because that's what Kenny Stills is uh, is about, has been about. He is the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee of the Miami Dolphins, fresh off of a tour uh, that uh, you, sir, said uh, on your Twitter feed, at K Stills, with the I, I believe, lowercase, yeah. correct? I noticed that. Uh, to see the work being done in the fight for equality and social justice, good to see you, Kenny Stills, here on the show in studio. Yes, sir, thank you for having so me. So why did you take this tour? What was this all about here? Um, you know, when the offseason came, uh, started a little bit early for us, obviously, since we didn't make the playoffs, I wanted to find a way to continue to kind of do the work that I've been doing um, in the local community there in Miami. And uh, I love traveling. I love being on the road. So I rented an RV and thought, let's uh, see some of the work that, you know, some of the like grassroots organizations are doing around the country and particularly in the South. And uh, you started in Miami. Then you went to the, the uh, state capital of Tallahassee first up. Um, and you met with Dream Defenders to protest for fair treatment of incarcerated individuals. Is that, does that go straight to the heart of why you were protesting during the national anthem this year? No, I, not directly to the to the heart of, but, you know, I, I see myself as somebody um, that is about human rights, you know, and, and for people to not be treated fair, is it's not right. And so uh, to have the opportunity to go up there and really be on the front lines and protest and, and try and um, start conversation was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. Okay. And so what, uh, what did you glean um, during this trip where you went to the MLK Center in Atlanta uh, here in Los Angeles, where you met Dr. John Carlos as well, what did you what did you learn on this trip here, Kenny? Um, I learned a lot, honestly. Uh, for me, it was really about educating myself about the his the history of the civil rights movement, um, connecting with young adults, young males, and and, and trying to mentor and um, show them that people care about them and, and understand that. Um, you know, I, I grew up in some in similar situations, and that I want to do everything I can and use my platform to help, you know, elevate their voices because, you know, sometimes they feel like they're not being heard or uh, change isn't coming their way. Mm -hmm. And did you did you leave um, more hopeful than when you got in that RV at all? Or, I mean, how did you come through this? Yeah, no, um, to be honest, it's very, uh, there's a lot of negativity, um, you know, in the world and we hear a lot of negativity, you know, through our social media channels. So, uh, it was really special for me to connect with a lot of these organizations and these people that um, have sacrificed themselves and dedicate themselves to to helping others, you know. And so uh, just connecting with like-minded people, positive people, and see the work that they're doing, it really, like, warmed my heart and, and uplifted my spirit. Yeah, Kenny Stills here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's walk through some other places that you went to. You, you, you uh, went over the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Yeah. What were you thinking when you did that in Selma? Um... It's unbelievable the feeling I had just walking across there. Uh, I was just really emotional person, so I was fighting back tears pretty much the whole time and being able to just picture and imagine um, what it was like for them to march across that bridge. And um, yeah, no, it just was special to me to, to be there and see that and 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 know the, the history that that's there. And um, the Medgar Evers house you went to in Jackson, Mississippi, where yeah. he, he was assassinated. Yep. Um, and then, uh, did you go to the the uh, the hotel, uh, the motel in Memphis, where uh, Martin Luther King? Yeah, so it's was a National Civil Rights Museum, I think. And um, yes, that that was probably the most powerful or one of the most powerful experiences that I've had. So, what were you feeling? I mean, walk Just, me through your, your um, temples there, Ken. You you go into different rooms throughout the museum, lead, leading up to where he was assassinated, and um, just every room. I went into, I just was filled with so much emotion. I was fighting back tears in every room that I was in, just angry and um, sad, disappointed, hurt, combination of all these feelings. And then you get to the to the room where, where he's assassinated and you see um, the ledge that he was at and kind of the angle from where the, the shooter was. And I just broke down, you know, and I, I couldn't hold back the tears anymore. I couldn't hold back uh, the way that I was feeling. And I was kind of embarrassed, you know, because there's a lot of other people um, in the museum, you know, doing their thing and, and paying their respects. And I just, I couldn't help myself, you know, just being there in that moment and um, understanding and seeing all the work and sacrifice everyone has made throughout the civil rights movement really just uh, touched my heart. Kenny Stills here on the Rich Eisen Show. And then in New Orleans, you hooked up with the Your Rights Camp run by none other than Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. What's, what, what, what spirits is Colin Kaepernick in? 
right now? Uh, he's in great spirits. Uh, the Know Your Rights camp is by far the most impressive thing that I've ever been a part of. Why is that? Uh, just the work that they're doing, you know, educating. I think there was over 400 kids there, educating them on their African history. Um, you know, we get into these breakout groups and they're learning about technology and uh, they're learning about holistic health and um, they're learning about finance. And so they're, they're leaving this camp with these tools. And, and then also, you know, having an African ancestry uh, kit, you know, in their bags and leaving with a pair of shoes and just like all these different tools. And, and uh, the way that they run the camp is, is very family or like oriented and the volunteers are so invested and the teachers and everyone that's there. It's just, it's a uh, very special. I think like the happiest I've ever been was the day after, or like the night after the camp was over and we all spent time together. Uh, it was, I was just on a high. Does he want to play football still? Oh yeah. Yeah, no, we texted the other day about, you know, throwing this off season and uh, doing things together, and uh, he's ready to play. Does he think he's going to play? Honestly, um, I, I, don't, I don't have any clue. I would, I would think that he thinks he's going to play. I don't see why not. You know, there's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks. Uh, he's a great player, and um, honestly, the, the controversy that we have going on with the national anthem and uh, what the owners are saying and how they feel about it, We've we've uh, we've got to move past like this this false narrative that they've made and um, really just own up to the mistakes that we have you know as a league and and not getting a, ahead of uh, this conversation and not pushing the narrative in the right direction and and uh, allowing our guys to speak up and speak out the way the NBA does and embracing that and and uh, embracing that as part of our, our culture and our league. But the NBA does not say what they're saying. Players are not saying what they're saying during. The national anthem with a symbolic act right and the owner of Miami. the miami dolphins mm -hmm. stephen ross says that um that he's concerned about it's an ineffective tactic that alienates more people than it enlists yeah which is kind of the heart of what what's you and i are talking about right now mm -hmm. right so do you feel that it's still an effective tactic to try and get across the points that you're trying to get across about society Kenny Stills? Yes, I do. Um, taking a knee has always been an, a way for us to um, bring eyes to issues that people might not understand or might not experience and to, to start that conversation. And so the people that are willing and open to have this conversation and they hear and they educate themselves and they hear the statistics about the things that are going on in our country, um, it's very easy for them to understand and be empathetic and, and to kind of... Uh, jump, I guess, to the other side of the fence, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, not, we're not disrespecting anybody. No one's against the military. No one's against the police. We, we just want people to be held accountable for their actions. And um, that's, that's not happening. And so if, if you're willing to have a conversation, the, the taking a knee thing is, is not a big deal. Uh, if you're not, then I see why it, why, why it bothers you. Because hmm. there, I have met some people who would love to have this conversation, but still at their core believe that there's a disrespecting of the national anthem that's going on right now. Right. Have you or any other players in the NFL talked about having a different forum for this moving forward? You know, I think uh, players understand that the league is going to try and do something different regarding uh, the national anthem next year. So. You know, I've, I've definitely thought about what I'm going to do. Um, and, you know, I think it's something we'll speak about at the Players Association meetings uh, this weekend. But, you know, the people that I've talked to that disagree with what I'm doing, you know, don't really understand one or haven't really tried to really deep dig deep into the situation and understanding that the reason why Colin and, and a lot of players were taking a knee be is because of the conversation that he had, mm -hmm. um, you know, asking him to go from sitting to kneeling uh, and... You know, so I think it's just like I said, being being open to having that conversation and, and knowing that, you know, just because you feel some way about something, somebody else feels a different way. And that that's our right in this country. Kenny Stills here from the Miami Dolphins. Have you spoken to your team's owner, Stephen Ross? I have not. About his comments? I have not. What do you think about his comments? You know, obviously, um, you know, I was I wasn't too thrilled with his comments, but you know, I, I understand, I guess, where he's coming from. And, you know, I, I just was a little bit frustrated with the fact that he's, you know, can say that because the president says something is a certain way, that's that's the final say. Or the way that he's, you know, kind of 
made his followers think that it's about something else, that it's the final say. And uh, that's just frustrating to me because that's not that's not right. That's not true. You know, just because somebody says it's a something something is a certain way, that's not how it is. And so, uh, how have your conversations in the past with Stephen Ross on this subject gone? Have you had any? Yeah. No, we've had plenty of conversations. Um, all the players that were participating in um, in, in the protests have, have had many conversations with him. And I think, you know, he's just obviously worried about where the, where the narrative is going and, um, you know, understands that the league didn't really do a good job of, of controlling the narrative from the very beginning. And so now it's, it's um, been, been kind of changed and, into something that it's not. But you do understand that there are still some people that won't even listen to your message because they can't get past the fact that somebody's kneeling during the national anthem. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I, that's, I understand that. I, I grew up uh, in Oceanside, California, right by the military base. My Pop Warner coach is one of the uh, most influential people in my life. He was in the military, served in the military for 20 plus years. And before I decided to take a knee, I called him the okay. night before the game. And I told him, hey, this is what we're thinking about doing. And, and I wasn't really um, like educated in, on, in anything, really. I just knew this feeling that I had in my gut. And I told him about it. And, you know, he asked me straight up, you know, I, I would hope that you would not take a stance um, during the game tomorrow. And, you know, I, I slept on it and I prayed on it. And the next morning I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to live with myself if I didn't get involved. And this was my way of getting involved. And, um, at the end of the day, it's a peaceful protest. You know, if if it really, really bothers you that much that we're taking a knee peacefully, silently, and it's, that's a sign of respect to us taking a knee. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you feel that way, but let's 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 have a conversation. I'm I'm easy to contact through social media on the phone. Like we can have a conversation about it, and um, you know, accept our differences. Uh, do you have a relationship with your Pop Warner coach yeah. still? Okay, yeah. so you guys are cool. Yeah. Okay. And what is your plan for next year? Do you have one? As far as the protest goes? Yes, sir. Um, you know, I've, like I said, I think that the league is going to allow us to be out there during the national anthem. And so I'm working on, um, you know, figuring out a way to still get my message out there and, and do something positive and, and um, still, you know, promote um, social justice issues. All right, Kenny, I'd love to take a break, come back, hit you on <laughs> I mean, the topic of the day. Uh, about the combine, your combine experience. Obviously, we'll talk some football with the Miami Dolphins, um, with your quarterback coming back, um, and Jarvis Landry perhaps walking out the door, and all that. Okay, sounds good. Found great. Kenny Stills here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. We are back with the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee from the Miami Dolphins, and a guy entering his fifth year in the National Football League out of Oklahoma. Maybe we'll talk a little Baker Mayfield too when we cool. come back with Kenny Stills of the Miami Dolphins here on the Rich Eisen Show. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Kenny Stills is here from the Miami Dolphins. We just had a really um, interesting, deep conversation uh, about your tour down throughout the Deep South. Uh, now I want to hit on the top story in the NFL today, which is Darius Geis of LSU saying that he was asked uh, questions that I think that are beyond the pale in the interview room, whether he liked men uh, or whether his mom was... Uh, uh, from a, a profession of ill repute. Um, I'm wondering what you think of that story, Kenny. Yeah, honestly, I think that those questions are uncalled for. Um, I see what you were talking about earlier. Just, you know, it's, it's or the guy that called in basically saying that it's a, a way to see if you can get a rise out of somebody or get a reaction out of them. But it's, it's unnecessary. And, you know, I dealt with, you know, similar questions when I was going through the process as well. Say, so you, say that again, you, you were, you were, you had the same question? Yeah. Yeah, there's you were a, asked that question? Yeah, there was a picture of me um, in a dress from when I was in college that made some headlines. And, uh, you know, I grew up with with three sisters, so older sisters, so they mm -hmm. put me in girls' clothing all the time. So I'm very comfortable putting on women's clothing. It's not, like, a, an issue to me. So I did it as a joke. And so when I get into the interview room, they ask me, like, hey, what's this? Um, you know, like, are we going to have an issue with you in our locker room? Like, what, what does this mean? Why are you doing this? And... Um, you know, like I said, I think it's uncalled for, but also I want to, they think it's, it's, they want to see how guys are going to react. Do you remember which team asked you that question? No. Were there multiple teams who asked you that question? Yeah, multiple teams had uh, the picture. Had, of had the photograph. Yeah. Well, obviously they, they have everything uh, on that's ever been said about you or ever been posted about you or anything like that. How did you react 
in the interview room? I told him exactly what I told you. The girl that I was dating at the time, uh, at the time we went to a wedding, and after I just was joking around and put it on, and she took a picture. And um, you know, I don't think she realized like a lot of her friends from the opposite school were following her on Twitter and stuff. And so, like a couple of days later, she must have put it on like as a joke, like laughing. And the kids from Oklahoma State picked it up, and so the you know they it became viral on the internet and they were making posters of it and like everyone had it in the stands and they were using it to try and get me off my game. But for me, it was just a joke. You know, I've, like I said, I've got older sisters. They dress me as a, as a little girl all the time. So let me ask you this. Cause, uh, 2013, when you were drafted, that was the year Michael Sam was at the combine as well. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that might've been on the brain of the, a talent evaluation community because of that? Or do you think that this is an issue with the NFL that they have, that they're constantly asking these questions potentially to prospects, Kenny? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Um, like I said, I don't think your sexual orientation has anything to do with you as a player or whatever, but it's just one of those things that, you know, in the interview process, the NFL uh, asks a lot of questions and, and they want to see how you're going to react or what your answer is. And so... That's just one of the things that they kind of prepare us for in, in the pre-interview uh, process. What else were you asked? Anything outlandish? Anything um, crazy? You know, I had a DUI when I was a freshman, and so they asked about that. That was the stuff. red flag that was yeah. that you had on your So we talked about that, and um, that was really it. You know, I feel like for the most part in, in college, I, I had a good time. I did my job. I played well. And, you know, they, they red flagged me for the, the dress picture and the DUI thing, and, and obviously I've done a good job of, of showing them. Um, that, you know, I don't have any issues. Do you think a team that asked this of guys, or whichever team asked this of you, should be disciplined? Um, I don't know. That's hard to say. That's hard to say. Um, I, I really have to think about that a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Kenny Stills here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, and uh, in terms of, you know, your alma mater sending a kid to the combine, Baker Mayfield, his questions in the interview room were essentially about his cockiness and his – bravado maybe and his uh, easily uh, triggered personalities we saw with Kansas this year yeah uh, refusing to shake his hand what do you think about Baker Mayfield's readiness to play at the next level best you can tell I uh, I mean I, I think he's going to be an asset to whatever team picks him up and that he'll, he'll fight for um, an opportunity to, to be the starting quarterback by uh, game one of the season mm -hmm. okay so you would you let's just say Dolphins are sitting there would you I'm very comfortable with uh, the quarterback that we have. Okay. Um, but like I said, I, I think wherever that he, wherever he goes, he's going to go up and put a fight, put up a fight, and 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 try and be the starter. Okay. Uh, how is Tannehill? He's doing Best great. As you can tell, he's doing great. Okay. Um, he's coming back. He's yeah. ready to go. Hasn't missed a beat. Uh, the kid works works his tail off, and um, that's something that's inspiring to to the team, and we're all excited to have him back in the huddle. Okay. And how uh, do you believe Kenny Stills in your heart of hearts? You look up week one, and you look in the huddle, and there's Jarvis Landry in your huddle. What do you think? Do I believe week one yes. that he's that, that he's, he's in there. the huddle? Yes, sir. Um, honestly, I don't know. I understand that you know this is a business, um, and you know that he's got to do what's what's best for him, and the Dolphins got to do what's best you know for for the team and the cap and all that. And so, I don't know. But you know, I, I signed back with the Miami Dolphins to play with Jarvis Landry, to play to play with Devontae Parker, to play with Ryan Tannehill. Um, I thought that we could have a three-headed monster and as a receiving core and be, you know, the best receiving core in the league. And so uh, that's what I signed back for, and, and, you know, that's what I hope to have. So, Well, the conversation that people have about Jarvis Landry is they look at his average yard per catch, and you remove the yak, and he's not somebody who takes the top of a defense off, and thus he's not really a top receiver in this National Football League. You play with him. How good is he? Uh, Jarvis is one of the best receivers I've ever played with. Uh, as far as route running, uh, knowing the defenses, coverages, his hands, um, and the guy's going to make people miss and break tackles. So, uh, he's, like I said about Baker, he's going to be an asset wherever he goes to, and you know, hopefully it's with the Dolphins. But um, if it's not, like I said, I understand the business portion of it. Okay, and how good is Kenyon Drake going to be? We talked about him in the television only segment. He opened my eyes after the Ajayi trade. Um, I thought, like most people, that you guys were just you know already just folding up tent maybe next year, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Oh my gosh, did you see in practice? I guess what none of us knew essentially. Yeah. No, we, we knew, and um, Mike Tannenbaum and those guys upstairs knew what they were doing, uh, drafting him. You know, he's going to be as good as he wants to be, and I, I think that about a lot of guys in the NFL. If you put the time in in the off season, 
Uh, you dedicate yourself to becoming a better player, to, to understanding the game, to knowing the offense. Um, you can be as good as you want to. And I see that in Kenyon as well. So what is the what do you want people to know about NFL players that you think you're just judged? You're judged as a by your cover, okay? You're we don't see your face. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're the only you're the you're the only athlete on a stage in the United States of America most of the time that your face is covered. We hardly ever see it. I know hockey players have helmets on, but we can really see their face a little bit more. Your faces are covered, you know, uh, unless you're uh, uh, one of maybe 10, 15 players, there's no commercials that you're doing. Uh, and you, uh, as a player, are known for maybe being anti-American, mm -hmm. anti-military, based on what you're trying to achieve for equality in this country. What do you want people to know that they don't know, potentially? You know, I, I want people to to know and understand that you know, not everyone is born into the same situation. Not everyone is born into, um, you know, having, you know, both parents or a great family. And um, we don't have to let, like, the, the, the places that we're born into, like, dic dictate our outcome. But we also have to understand that um, there, there are people that are in this country that are just trying to survive. And um, they're not necessarily criminals. They're just trying to make ends meet or survive and, and live for the next day. And so we've got to do a better job of calling on um, our government officials, our community leaders to, to, you know, close this, this wage gap or close the, um, the poverty gap and, and do a better job of um, helping each other and bringing each other up. So you're not just going to shut up and carry the ball? No. No, definitely not. And it's not something that's just during the national anthem. It's not something that's um, for last year or whatever. Like, this is something that I'm committed to. It's something that I feel wholeheartedly about uh, deep down inside. And so um, I think, you know, it, it's in your best interest to, to, you know, get on that train. And being about it, clearly, as you could, anybody who just takes a look at your, your Twitter feed can tell, uh, at, uh, at K Stills uh, on Twitter. But in terms of just, just to wrap it up, knowing who football players are, Right. I mean, you, you, your answer was about what you're trying to cast a spotlight on about our society, our country, about professional football player that you might be just, again, judged by the cover. Yeah, no, I think just people understanding that we're just humans. A lot of us, you know, a lot of people want, I think a lot of guys or different guys aspire to be famous or to be well known or whatever. And um, I grew up in Oceanside, California. I saw a junior sale. I saw what he was to uh, the people of Oceanside, the people of San Diego. And that was something that I admired and inspired to be. I think he was very reachable as far as like, you know, he was holding beach workouts and, and kids knew who he was. They could shake his hand. They, they knew who he was as a man. And uh, that's something that I, I aspire to be, you know, just a regular person. And, um, you know, that's, that's what you can learn about me from this conversation, from following me and being around me. But we're all different. You know, some guys aspire to be famous and rich and all that type of stuff, and then there's other guys like me that are just that just want to be regular human beings. And then last question for you, Kenny Stills: uh, Do you hear my footsteps after what you just saw? Combo? <laughs> yes or no? That's no, just I'm definitely not. Yes I'm definitely just, not just, worried about your footsteps at all. But I like your cleats. I see your cleats back here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your form's gotten a lot better over time. Yeah, 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 if yeah. you really like, honestly, seriously, I can get you on some 40 training stuff. I ran a pretty fast 40. What'd I'll get you, you right. What What'd you run? So I have 428 unofficial. And then I think I was like four three five or four three eight, but I'll get okay. your start right. Okay, and I'll, I'll get you right. I promise. Are you serious? Because I I'm will take dead you up serious. on that. Serious. I get. You, we can get your start going right now. I remember my start and everything. I mean right, right, right now, right, right now? now, right now. I'll get you right for that next. It means year. you have to train. You know that, right? <laughs> we'll get you a parachute. Not like day before what, stretching. So is this is this a is this a year long dedication? We need about mean? what do you what do you what do you need? Four months. So I okay, got to get so you on the sleds. I got to get you on the parachute. Well, sled, you're not talking about winter vacation. No, no, okay. no. Okay. Um, sleds, parachutes. And then we get your start right. Okay, and get my we start get your right. your arms pumping the right way because okay. that's where you get your speed So from. I run to the 2019 combine, where, whenever the heck that is. So let's just say early March. We can walk it back, what, like week week eight NFL season? Okay. Is that yeah, what we'll it is? Start, I can start. We can FaceTime. And okay. I'll get you right on your training. And then after the season's over, we'll meet up, and then we can do the final. Kenny practice. Stills, you are you are hired. Cool. Okay. No fee, just a flight, <laughs> just a flight and the sleep number bed. Okay. I might there need two. Go. I might need two, two sleep number beds. Plus one. Kenny plus Stills one. plus one. That's my kind of guy. All right, I'm I'm in, I'm in. I appreciate you uh, offering that. 
Because, you know, it goes for a good cause, St. Jude's Children's Research yeah. Hospital. Yes, sir. Okay. Kenny Stills, love having you here. Don't be a stranger, okay? Because I'm, I'm coming. Cool. I'm calling. All right. That's basically what I'm saying. Uh, Kenny Stills here. 844 rich number to dial when we come back in 60 seconds. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.